We're going to go to the Word of God. Uh, you will turn to the book of uh, Philippians, chapter 4. Finally, please stand with us. Beginning at verse number one, we'll read down through the fourth verse. Let's read responsibly. The beginning verse says, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord. My dearly beloved. I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. This is the verse of emphasis. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Amen. Our Father, thank you for the word of God. I ask that you will illuminate it. Let it mean something to each one that's here today. Strengthen the hearts of your people. Let healing flow. Let the inspiration of the Almighty be with us today. We thank you and give your name to praise. Take full control again of this atmosphere, Lord, and be glorified. And let your word have free course today in our hearts. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I was thinking about the body, thinking about the things that we face, the trials. And in light of where we are as a nation, the challenges that are We are facing There's so many of them at this time, and uh, I'm sure that people's hearts, some are really concerned about uh, what's going on, but we are instructed by God to keep our focus mm -hmm. to know who we are and who we believe in. And, um, and you know, it's the body of Christ is also in the hands of God and God is working in the body. Yeah. In spite of all the things that we see, we are in the world and we are not to be of the world. But God's goal, one of the goals that God has for his people is that his people bear fruit. Amen. And uh, he mentions that in John 14. And Galatians chapter 5 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And he lists several of those fruits. And it is clear through the Word of God that fruits come by Jesus Christ. And so God, one of God's goals for the believers is that we bear fruit. And we are likened to fruit trees or trees according to Isaiah 61. That they may be trees of God's planting or trees of righteousness, the plantings of the Lord. Remember, remember that scripture? So fruit trees are expected to bear fruit. So we, if we may be concerned about some of the things that we're facing at this time. We want to be reminded that God works in us yes. both to will and to do of His good pleasure. Yes. Since we are not our own and we're bought with a price, God chooses to do in us as He wills. Yes. 
Somebody say amen. amen. So since God's desire is for us to bear fruit, one of the things that he said to me years ago, I am trying to establish you. And, you know, I was talking to my former pastor and I told him what I heard from the Lord and he, he was thinking of down here. But then when I got back in the presence of God, he said, no, I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about establishing your heart. It's on sound biblical principles. So it seems good to the Lord to set our heart up on biblical principles. And we are assured as God works in us and establishes our hearts. Yes, we may face things, but the journey gets a lot easier for us as he sets our hearts up. Yeah. on biblical principles. Yeah. God wants to establish faith in our hearts. Yeah. And another principle is forgiveness, right? Yeah. Another one is giving. Yeah. Another one is rejoicing. Yeah. One of the disciplines is prayer. Yeah. Fasting, right? Yeah. Yeah. To walk in love, isn't that right? Yeah. Walk in humility. Yeah. And we are to be thankful, right? Yeah. God seeks to establish our hearts. And the, the list can go on as to how He's setting our hearts up on Bible principles. Another one is learning to roll our cares over on Him. God seems to understand the importance of our not carrying things. Because even if we carry it, it can weigh us down at the least or the most. We cannot do anything about it. But what we can do is learn. Learn to roll it over on him. Peter says, casting all your cares, your worries, your concerns on him because for he hear it for you so it is something that God wants to uh, us to understand about walking with him and uh, I say it all the time and it gets real as the time goes by Moses learned God's ways somebody says his ways his way. Israel only saw his acts but they never learned his ways. And so God wants us to learn his ways. Is that right? And uh, so God is faithful in seeking to establish our hearts. I found out a long time ago he's not intimidated when I get frustrated. His love is fixed. Is unconditional, so he will continue to seek to establish our hearts. And um, there are certain things that God has, over these 40 years, have continually just wanted me to really get a hold of. One of those I'm going to talk a little bit more about it later, and that is praise. God seemed to know the value of an attitude of the heart that will consistently and continually praise him. And when he is working to establish our hearts, he may be just relentless in the sense of just this must be important if, as we are down here on earth, right? Yeah. Trials don't necessarily um, cease just because we are saved. Right. But there are some things that he talks about in his word, how we are to view those yeah. trials. 
not like people that have no hope and people right. that right. have or have to depend on their own selves. Right. We're serving God. So God desires to, for us to bear fruit, he desires to establish our heart, to set it up on sound biblical principles. And so as I, I, as I begin to better understand that I can better appreciate why God continues to allow certain things to happen yeah. in my walk with him and relationship with him so that I may, my heart may be yeah. set up yeah. on that which is sound. Yeah. I heard Jesus said when he in the uh, uh, Gospels or Matthew in the Beatitudes or the Sermon on the Mount Again, they said, whoever hear these sayings of mine and do them, I will liken to yeah. him to a wise yeah. man, a yeah. builder who, yeah. who, who, who uh, uh, established his uh, foundation Hallelujah. on something solid. Yeah. It wasn't flaky. It wasn't something that could be shifted or moved with the sand and the tides and the vicissitudes of life. It was something that was established yeah. Yeah. on something solid. Yeah. Yeah. The rock of God. So I'm learning more and more that God will not stop in his seeking to establish our hearts. If I have failed to see the value of praise when I face things, then I will continue to face things. And it will continue to vex me until I learn that I can rejoice in the Lord regardless of what it looks like. Once I learn that, hallelujah, I can go through the trial. Glory. I can go through him. Glory. You see, I can't change Glory. Satan. That's right. And you can't change him. <laughs> he will always be against my life yeah. and against the Christian faith. That's right. He will always be evil. That's right. He will always have strategies right. to stop me oh. and to make my life miserable, but he cannot do it oh. if my heart says we wrestle not yeah. against flesh and blood. My God. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is look at someone and say God is establishing my heart. Now let me let me take you to a couple of scriptures here. Uh, we, we, we said we'd get to one of those key principles. That is so important that it rules in our hearts. Now look what Paul said in chapter 4, and I'll get back to it. Um, verse 4, rejoice in the Lord. How? Always. And again I say, rejoice. Right. Now I want you to look at chapter 3. Verse 1 says in chapter 3, finally my brethren rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, and these not grievous, but for you, it is a safeguard. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Amen. Anybody, can you appreciate what God's yeah. doing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad that he's much wiser than I am. I'm so glad that he did not leave me to myself. That's right. Yeah. Cares for us. Yeah. Ooh, glory. glory. Yeah. Cares for us. Yeah. If I was left to myself, I could make a mess. Yeah. And I could be good at making a mess. But God in a life can direct the life according to the will of God. 
if you come through a trial with victory, yes. hallelujah. Hallelujah, he can do it. He can guide us through life. Hallelujah, but we do have to work with him in that, right? You can't just expect him to drag us through it. The children of Israel, apparently they felt like he was going to get them there any kind of way. But Joshua and Caleb understood that it took faith. Even when God is moving, isn't that right? And God gave them some. He said, this is what I want you to have. And then he said, um, the children of Israel said, uh, no, you know, there's too many giants over there. You know, God knows we can't do nothing with all these giants in the land. I don't know why he. <laughs> I don't know why he did that. <laughs> so he went and gave, came back with the report and said, uh, yeah, it's a good man, all right, like he said. Fruit's a big man like I've never seen. But <laughs> said, but. Joshua and Caleb were standing there listening. Couldn't hardly wait to speak. There was an attitude of faith moving so strong in their soul. They could hardly wait till they shut up with their negative report and say, let's go up right away. God delights in us. He'll give us the land. The enemies may be big, but they're brave for us. Oh man, look at somebody say, it's just how we view things. Amen. All right, now look at First Peter here. We're going to look at two or three scriptures here. First Peter chapter 5 here. First Peter chapter 5. You know, Peter was admonishing the elders uh, serve, feed the flock of God, taking the oversight, but serve by example. And so that as people could begin to see God modeled out through his leaders, he would bring hope in that right. So, but one of the things that he said, because earlier he was encouraging us, you know, to uh, arm ourselves with the same mind that Christ had. Isn't that right? Amen. And uh, but now in his concluding thoughts, he said, verse 10, uh, he talks about verse 8, be so but be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion. Walks about seeking whom he may devour. He wants us to want us to be aware of the invisible foe that uh, 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 is very cruel, isn't that right? Yeah. And he has no sense of love. He has no sense of uh, uh, respect of a person. He's looking and seeking all the time who he can yeah. devour. He said, with that view in mind, with that understanding, he says, whom resist, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. We are not in an isolated situation where nobody can understand what I'm going through. You know, have you ever felt like that sometimes? You're in a situation that seemed like, boy, I wonder if anybody is going through like this. I was in prayer this morning, God put somebody on my mind, and I heard their thinking. I heard their thinking. It says, it ought not to be this way. I, I, I've said that myself. It, it looks like the suffering wouldn't stop, but but God is after something. God has a plan and a purpose of why we suffer, somebody. We're not just suffering to be suffering. God, the mighty architect, God, the mighty orchestrator, God is at work in our lives to accomplish His divine will and purpose. You look at somebody saying He's good at what He does. So now verse 10 is the verse I want you to look at. He said, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after 
that you've suffered a while. You know, the trials will go on until God is satisfied that the trial that was sent has accomplished the purposes of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so Peter says, after you have suffered a while, because why I say it may not be over yet. <laughs> Sorry, I wish I could tell you it's all over. But it's not over yet. Isn't that right? <laughs> but the beauty of what Peter is saying, it is after you have suffered a while, the God of every sufficient grace. He's going to do something. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, I, I, I know a little bit of what it, what it means for God to step in. Yes. When I've had all I can take, sometimes I say I can't take no more, but you know what? <laughs> no, that, that, that's not the right spirit, isn't that right? Yes. God said I won't put more on you than you can bear. You can bear. So I, I have to go on. <laughs> But when maybe I don't know where I'm at and uh, uh, whether I've had enough, God knows. And once he knows them, that that trial has sufficiently accomplished what it was sent to do, then he stands up and does something different. Look what Peter said. He, look what he says. He said in verse 10. First he said, Make you perfect. Yes. Now that, that's not the same term that's used in um, perfect in, in, in um, uh, some of the other sense there, equipping us for the saints and so on. But it's perfect here. Has, it, it means to fit or join together. Yes. It's the idea of adjustment. Yes. You, you see, sometimes we need to be adjusted. Uh, yeah. uh, you, 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 sometimes when, you, have you ever heard people say, I ain't going to take this no more. <laughs> there, there, there's a need for adjustment. Yeah. If God hadn't seen fit to move the trial, that means there has to be an adjustment. Yeah. And, and, and maybe maybe God is working some steadfastness or, or some endurance or, uh, or determined yeah. spirit. Yeah. And if he's working that in us, then, then, then when we get tired of a situation and feel like I ain't going to take no more of that, then, 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 then God says, no, 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 you can't, you, not, not yet, not yet. I have not established and perseverance in your life. I haven't yet established them. You see, because the enemy is going to be the enemy forever, but God says, I, I can make you overcome every situation, every trial. I can do it, and I want to do it through you. I want to give you grace where you don't have grace. I can do it through you, but I need you to trust me enough to stay the cause and not be moved. It's after he said you've suffered. It's after you've suffered a while. God determines that. Hallelujah. Look at somebody said, don't throw your hands up no more. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Don't lose heart. Understand the hand, the mighty hand of God that's on you. That's moving you toward the goal. That's moving you toward the purpose of God. That's moving you and guiding you in the midst of the trial that you're facing. You're not in it alone. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. But after you suffer a while, you begin to adjust you. You begin to adjust me. And as I thought about adjusting, I heard the Lord say, sometimes uh, the views has to be adjusted. And sometimes the way we view things, you know, sometimes we're seeing through the eyes of, of man.
understand and we, we're not looking at things from an eternal perspective. We're looking at things of, of, from a short term perspective. We're looking at what may happen within the next few, few weeks and so on. But God is looking at something in a longevity says in a long term he sees what's going to happen. So is he, if he is trying to fix us and get us prepared for the years to come then God is looking at it in a long term sense. And, but the, 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 the important thing to remember is that God's in control of, and since he knows everything about everything then if I allow him to make me if I allow him to mold me if I allow him to do what he's doing in me hallelujah then my heart will be established and settled fixed and trusting in the Lord for David said they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion which cannot be removed but abide forever hallelujah David said, my heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Another one says, trust not in oppressions. We can't trust in oppressions. They're going to come, but we cannot trust in them. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved. Yes. You see, God's after stability. Yes. Isn't that right? yes. God's after stability yes. of character. God's after stability in our lives. Yes. Stability of speech. Yes. Sometimes our speech betrays us. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. Amen. God's after stability. Yes. Hallelujah. I, I, I cannot help but remember one trial that used to frustrate me. And I'm saying all the wrong things. And God stopped me and said, Son, if you will just say what the hell of the Lord, I'll do thus and so. So I had to learn that. Hallelujah. I don't say what I have. I don't say. I must not say what I have. I must speak what God yeah. says. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right in Isaiah say he sent his word. He sent his word. Hallelujah. And that word was sent. And the word will not return void. But it shall accomplish the divine purposes of God. Hallelujah. Say it, my sister. Say it, my brother. Say it. Hallelujah. I shall overcome with the help of God. Say it, somebody. Through God I shall do valiantly. Say it, somebody. That all things are possible to them that believe. Say it, somebody. God shall supply all of my need. Say it, somebody. With God all things are possible. Say it, somebody.
You said, I've been here for a long time, but, but say, with the help of God, I'm stepping out of it. With the help of the Almighty God, no chain, no trial, no tri tribulation, no persecution is going to bind me. Or if God says, you're coming out of because greater is he living inside of you than he that's in the world. Say it, somebody. I'm coming out of Say it, somebody. My situation is going to change. Say it, somebody. God is on my side. Say it, somebody. Many 
stones and bricks and so on. And they all uh, part, isn't that right? And uh, so I, I, uh, he said to fit or join together. Some people don't like to be next to somebody. <laughs> in the body of Christ. So, so, some people feel like uh, they're better than others, you know. And so we can't be fitly joined together, you know. Hallelujah. Remember what the Bible teaches is one blood. Isn't that right? One Lord. One faith. One baptism. One God. Father of all. Above all. Through you all. So we all are one. Amen. You know, that, 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 that sometimes some don't look too well spiritually. But that same blood that washed us washed them also. Isn't that right? No, 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 no. I know some, some may not have it all together, and sometimes some can hurt and get nervous, and, and some can do all this. But, but, but wait, 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 wait. We are one blood. We're brothers and sisters in the Lord. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And God, and a part of that adjustment is helping us to see like God see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So the way we view things is important. Yes. I want to talk to run to this mic and find in the NIV or the New Living Translation, 1 Corinthians 12. I want you to listen to something here. 1 Corinthians 12, I want you to read from verse 12 through 26. I want you to listen to what he's saying right in line with what we're teaching here. First Corinthians 12. Uh, verses 12 through 26. Okay. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. <laughs> yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen, while the more honorable parts do not require the special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members, so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. Amen. Come on, somebody, let's give God some praise. Come on, give him a big praise, I tell you. We haven't learned that lesson. That's one of the things God began to tell me. No, 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 he said, like, no, no, you got to understand this, how the body is structured. It's just like a human body. Let's say the hand, one hand is withered, can't function, and the other part of the body is functioning. There will be a strain on that body with that hand that's withered and can't function. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? What the Lord is saying is that I need all the body. I need all the body. But listen to this. 
the parts that may be more significant need more care. So somehow we missed the need to care for some more than others with our finite thinking. We've misunderstood the wisdom of God. Are you hear what I'm saying? And this is what it must allow me to see. We must understand how the body is structured. So sometimes we may be suffering because God is trying to adjust our views. We don't see like God wants us to see. And once we see it right, then that trial is going to stop. Are you hear what I'm saying? Come on, let's give God some praise. Then, uh, then Peter, <clears throat> the second thing he said, after you've suffered a while, he said, not only the Lord strengthen you, but establish you. That's to make you steadfast. Oh my. Steadfast. It speaks of a foundational position. Get this now. It speaks of a foundational position. By grace, we're saved. Right. Sometimes we can be going through challenges because we had learned that it's by His Spirit. Oh, it's getting quiet in there. When God gets to establish us, that is not by might nor by power, but by His Spirit. When God begins to show us that it's by grace you're saved, through faith. No goodness of our own. Uh, we may go through challenges uh, and we, we, we don't understand well, what's the deal, God? Why are you allowing this here? Maybe he's trying to deal with that religious spirit. But maybe he's trying to deal with that self-sufficiency. Maybe God is causing us to understand that it doesn't matter how long you pray. It doesn't matter how much you stay in the Word. It doesn't matter Sometimes I've learned how to pray things through it. And day after day, I, I see the victory. I see the glory of the Lord. But sometimes I can misunderstand that it's only the Lord working through that. It's not anything that I got so good. It's not something that's so powerful in me. It's still God. Are you hear what I'm saying? And every now and then, He allows things to happen to make me fall on my face and cry out to God again. He said, like Paul said, Paul said, when we were in Asia, he said, the things that happened to us, we were pressed out of measure, above strength, and so much so that we despaired of life. Wanted to die. But he said, but God, who raises the yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Moved in us. Hallelujah. Yeah. And what he was trying to work in Paul, he said this year so that we won't trust yeah. in ourselves. You, you say, not the great apostle Paul. No, you know Paul knew better than that. Yeah. That's right. You see, we live in this fleshly body yeah. and that heart is deceitful. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sometimes when you think, Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so trusting in the Lord. Uh, you might be surprised to face something. Hallelujah. That you're not trusting him too well. Um, hallelujah. So it behooves us. Look at what I said. It behooves us to walk softly. It behooves us to walk softly. Isn't that right? We got to walk softly. Hallelujah. There was a certain king, Manasseh. He was evil in the sight of the Lord. But when 
God dealt with him. The Bible says he repented in sackcloth and ashes and he began to walk softly. <laughs> you see, beforehand he was an arrogant man. You yeah. see, God had to deal with him. Yeah. So he began to walk softly yeah. down. Like he was treading on butter. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hallelujah. There's something about the need yeah. to depend on yeah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. When we learn that thing, God will do anything for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, he said, call on me in a day of trouble and I'll answer you. Yeah. And I'll show you great and mighty things that you know not. There's so much helping God. There's so much help in the Almighty God. And God wants us to look to Him. Hallelujah. Oh, He can bring you out of that trial. Oh, He can bring you through that situation. Oh, yes, He can. Hallelujah. He said, my hand not short. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. He's working something better in our lives. So He said, I'm going to put some steadfastness in you. What do you, what do you, what do you mean, Brother Harry, steadfastness? i got to understand that it's grace. Yeah. I gotta understand that it's the blood that was shed. Yeah. I gotta understand, hallelujah, mm -hmm. that when I'm in a relationship with anybody, I must forgive. Yeah. Right. These are basic things to our yeah. Christian experience. Yeah. So God teaches us. Yeah. He allows us to go through. And the trial yeah. was set to accomplish yeah. a divine purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not be too quick to get out of it <laughs> until we have learned what the trial was sent to accomplish. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. And then once that happens, he removes that trial. And guess what? You go on to another one. <laughs> Establish our hearts that nothing may shake us. And then he said, strengthen you. Strengthen you that you may overcome every adverse force. God's able. He can move mountains. He can do anything. Hallelujah. So God was telling us about these things here. Romans 5, 1 through 5, he talks about we boast of glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation works patience. And one writer interpreter says, the suffering produces fortitude, endurance, steadfastness. And patience works experience or approval perseverance or stability of character or proof of soundness or tested character. God allows us to be tested but all along he is developing that soundness and that solidness and that steadfastness of character. We need it in these times we're living in. Hallelujah. And because God loves us as a father, he works to establish our hearts. And the Lord wanted me to understand and share this with us today, that that's a part of what he's doing. You may wonder why God, how long, how long, how long, but don't wonder, this is the answer. God is saying, I'm the, the trial was sent for a purpose. Oh, yes, allow it to accomplish its purpose. Well, old man James said, brother, count it on. You fall into diverse temptation. The sink went bad. The car wouldn't start. The boss on the job was angry with it. A sickness in my body. One thing after another. My son ain't acting right. My daughter ain't acting right. Situation, one after another. He said, count it on. When you fall into so many trials, this is happening. That Count it all joy, hallelujah. Lift your hands and praise God. Don't throw my throat up. Don't throw no rock at me. Count it all joy. Give God some glory, hallelujah. And he'll work it out. I, 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 I just believe that. And what God is after is teaching us the principle. Yeah. Yeah. And when our heart will do it, we see God at work. We learn some of his ways. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. That's what God wants. My children 
are to know my ways, the ways that he wants us to know. Nobody can figure God out, but there are ways that God wants us to teach him, to teach us. And one of those ways is praise in the midst of it. Hallelujah. Praise. And so Paul says, he said, finally, my brothers, all that I told you, remember this. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. Now, before I go to this last thought about praise, is this. In Romans, it teaches us that we glory in tribulation. But we glory because of the beneficial effect upon our Christian life. There's benefit in this trial. There's benefit in this trial. So it's a win-win situation, right? Trials are assets that develop our Christian character. I see them as assets. And so Paul said, much more now, I will glory in my infirmities. Are you with me? Because when I am weak, then am I strong. Oh, I'm not strong when I feel goosebumps. I'm strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the spirit of glory is resting on me and I'm going through changes and challenges and trials and so on and those that I can't figure out, but I'm but I'm staying under the hand of God. Hallelujah. The spirit of glory is resting on me. And that's why and then then then, then when I when I, I stood up to do something uh, uh, by the spirit of God, you see that power flowing so mightily because I stayed under because you stayed under yeah. that hand of God until he changed things. Everybody with me? Yeah. Let's give God some thanks for his goodness. Yeah. So in order to make it or for our hearts not to get bitter or resentful, he has instituted praise. Hallelujah. So Paul said, brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, it's not grievous to me, but it's a safeguard against the attacks of the enemy. It's a safeguard. It's safe for you. Excellent wisdom, God told me, comes through praise. Hallelujah. Uh, the Bible in Psalms 50, 23, he said, Whoso offers praise glorifies me. And to him that orders his conduct aright will I show the salvation of God. Praise him in the midst of what we're going through. Hallelujah. And, and, and we can really rightfully celebrate because of the time we're living in and because of what Christ has done isn't that right? That's right? It is a true time of celebration. Yes. Hallelujah. It's a time of jubilee. Yes. It is a time of jubilee. Hallelujah. Yes. When you look at Leviticus 25, it is a true time. Jesus likened the time that he was moving on the face of this earth and the time when the spirit of grace was here upon the church to a time of jubilee in the Old Testament when every man went back to his possession. Hallelujah. There was a time of joy and jubilee because, and but it wouldn't happen until the day of atonement. On the day of atonement, after that, at that point here, that's when the trumpet would sound, a jubilee sound. Every man go back to his own day. What are you saying? He's saying, Jesus is saying, the day of atonement has come, and that atonement was for the, for the sins of all humanity, and for in this Christian era, everybody ought to begin to praise God and thank Him for all the things that He's done for setting our lives free from the powers of the darkness. And you can join me in that praise of God. Oh, he's deserving of praise. And praise works wonders. And when I praise God, hallelujah, I give God the glory that's to his name. When I praise God, things begin to happen. When I praise God, hallelujah, he changed the way I think. When I praise God, hallelujah, he works wonders. When I praise God, hallelujah, he sent an ambushment on my behalf. When I praise God, things happen, brothers and sisters. I wonder if you can join me in praising God.
voice, ain't that happy? Praise the Lord. Praise this company to the upright. Serve the Lord with gladness. That's what the Word of God says. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Hallelujah. 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 Peter said, don't think it's strange when you fall into various trials, which is to try you. He said, but rather rejoice. Hallelujah. Glory to God. James said, count it all joy. Jesus said, when you're persecuted, he said, rejoice. Leap for joy. For great is your reward in heaven. Oh, saints of God, hear what the Spirit of God is saying. He's looking for us as a people to rejoice in him. Praise goes before any victory. Praise goes before any victory. Whoever offers praise glorifies the Lord. There may be some of you now that says, Lord, I've had, I've had a real attitude that not nice in my trials. But God wants you. As a matter of fact, I felt him saying, some of us gone through things and we just haven't had a good attitude about it. We've just been moping and pouting and frustrated. But I wonder if you will acknowledge it to the point where you, you say, you know what, Lord, that opened my eyes today and I'm going to have a right attitude. If you feel that way, just come. We're not going to prolong the service.